everyone and welcome back to Grayson's Bookmark. Here on this channel I make all types of writing and bookish content and today's video is a writing one. But it's also an update. Between the time that I last talked about Project Seaside and now, uh, something has happened. Seaside has been sent out to beta readers, or I should say it was sent out, it was sent out in like the beginning of January and now it's the end of January and I have almost all my feedback back and like... <laughs> It's it's really hard to describe the feeling of your work being read by someone, um, but you can't like fix it. You can't do anything about it, um, and they are out there forming their own opinions about it. And you're just like, <laughs> and not just someone. Some five are reading my book. Some five have read my book, and it's just. It's just ridiculous to think about um but throughout this whole month of january i've been like um dipping in and out of my comments that i'm getting on my document and then like going like mm, don't read it yet it's just so tempting because i get an email every time someone is commenting on the google doc and i'm like what are they saying <laughs> but, um i managed to hold my self-control back until a couple of nights ago where um I said, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a little peek. And then that turned into two hours of me writing in my notebook all like the positive and negative things they had to say about it. There are, there are still Google form responses that I need to go to. Um, but yeah, basically I like, I know the general opinions of my book. Surprisingly, there is a lot of grammar I need to fix. Um, and that could have happened between transferring my file from Scrivener to Google Docs and they have different um, spell check programs so that could have been a reason why there were so many in this cool Google Doc and um, I'm not worried about that kind of stuff. I'm glad they commented on that because uh, it just means I need to pay more attention to my grammar. It's a good reminder but also um, I'm not worried that those comments were in there because I didn't say that they couldn't. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about grammar. I don't know like the standard process for reading reading. Like, do you let them look at your grammar or do you tell them not to? So I read grammar comments. I read general reactions. I, um, one of my beta readers is hilarious and leaves really funny comments. And I was just like laughing to myself in my room, like by myself. And I don't know, it's just, I feel, after reading these comments, like in general, they were very positive. I got lots of comments about the ways my book was emotionally affecting my readers and I, I, I'm i proud of my work. And it, it kind of feels like, it kind of feels like I have superpowers. Like I can make people feel these things. I could guide them through a journey of um, grief and love and trying to build a relationship and like through that emotional arc to a resolution and it's like like I did that I did this and I am making people feel these these incredibly strong emotions with what I'd written and I'm like what did I actually do I don't remember doing that when I was writing it but yeah it's just, it's just crazy <laughs> and the problem is I'm trying to work on a second project right now called Project Popstar. You can check out my last writing video, which is a writing vlog for that in the cards. I think they should be on this side of the screen. <laughs> and I'll also put that vlog in the description. But the problem is I peeked at the comments for Seaside and now all I want to do is edit Seaside. Uh, but I, I've created a plan, I've created a small, tiny little plan for me. Um, so I don't get derailed too quickly. I'm still expecting a few more beta reading comments to come in and I'm gonna wait until February 1st to open that Google form and to fully um, read all my comments. And I'm probably realistically gonna do that all in one sitting. It's gonna take a long time, but it will be worth it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna read the draft for myself um, between February 1st and February 5th. That might be too long, that might not be long enough. Um, I will see, I'll find out. 
in between me writing down my my beta reader feedback and right now I've already had a couple of ideas about what I need to add to fix some of the plot things and it's just <laughs> my fingers like I'm itching to get back to it but I have so many things to do right now, so I can't. And also, I don't want to stop writing Project Popstar until I reach the midpoint, which I'm giving myself until February 1st to accomplish. I also need to apply to grad school by February 1st, so yay. <laughs> I don't have a list of things that I want to change about the draft yet because I haven't read it since the second draft. I think I literally stopped looking at it like sometime in December. It's been a while. So there are a lot of things about the plot that I don't remember and especially when I was looking at the Google Doc I was like, I, I wrote that. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be good for me to read it again. You know, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm ready to start. Can't start yet. I would love to finish the revising process, finish the third draft by Let's say Camp Nano. I would like to finish the third draft by Camp Nano. Um, and also during that time, look for some sensitivity readers. There are some minority groups in the book that I want to make sure I am properly representing um, in a non-harmful way and in an accurate way. Listen, if I have the third draft done by April 1st, then I don't know what comes after a third draft fourth draft? Do you line edit something before you send it out to people? Am I ready to send it out to agents after then? I really don't know. Like, I feel like now that I've done this beta reading thing that I've like, I'm like at the next level of like taking this project seriously. And now I'm, I feel like things are speeding up so quickly because like, I know what I have to do and I want to do it and I feel like I'm going to be really motivated. I'm going to do it really quickly. Um, and in no time, the third draft we finished and then what? Like, I feel like I'm running out of uh, defined steps in the process. Um, Cause it's, it's clear, like you outline, you write a first draft, you wait, you read it, you write a second draft, you send it to beta readers, you read it, you write a third draft, write a synopsis, write a blurb, write a query letter. <sighs> Obviously this is all going to depend on how I feel about the book after a third draft. Um, and yeah, I just, it's just, just like a, like a wait and see if, if anyone out there has, has ever written past a third draft. <laughs> Please let me know what you've done with it after that point. If you felt like you still needed to re-outline or um, would you move on to, on to line edits then? Um, or just like look for continuity stuff? Like what do you do after the third draft? That's what I wanna know. And the last point I wanna mention is about the title of Seaside. Um, it just made me, it just made my little like writer heart happy and the acronym of my title which you may remember, but don't know what it stands for, is A-O-A-L. That is the title I love for this project. Um, and my beta readers thought it was really resonant with the messages and the themes of the book. And it was a very interesting title as well. And that makes me very, um, I don't know, just like validated. Like, like yes, <laughs> I chose a good title and it's not a gimmick. And like, it's also symbolic of like, how the characters interact with each other. And I know that doesn't make any sense because you don't know what the title is, but I really hope that someday you will know the title because I don't know, like, because I'm agented or because the book sold, I, that's what I want. But um, I don't know if I will get it. So fingers crossed and um, all I can do now it's write the book. I realized I didn't mention what Seaside is about because there may be some new people on this video. Seaside is an LGBT plus romance between two teenage boys who go to the same high school. We have Luca and Julian. They both have um, grief and like 
trauma with relationships in their past and they somehow coincidentally keep meeting each other and they realize that they are the support each other needs um, and it kind of feels like they're on like a collision towards each other that that not even they recognize until until they do and a lot of the plot centers around Luca's uh, Luca's boyfriend who unfortunately passed away in the summer and the current timeline is at six months after that and Luca is still grieving but he's pretending that he's okay uh, which is unhealthy so a lot of this book is about grief not so much overcoming it but coming to terms with it and recognizing it and um, just like accepting grief into your life and learning to live around it um, my beta readers reinforce that this book is not just a romance but it is also about grief and character growth and um, self-confidence and trust so yeah that is seaside if you want to learn more about their project i will link its playlist down below and it should also play at the end cards of this video so you can just click on it in the end thank you so much for watching this video leave a like if you like this kind of content um if you want to see more writing updates from me you can hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one bye